Hi, welcome to another episode of Mr. Marty. Well, today I want to talk about um, my mom and kind of how my mom was uh, a role model for me in um, in infant toddler uh, caregiving. And um, again, I try to focus on a lot of positive things in my videos, and that was very positive. Um, growing up watching my mom um, take care of babies was just incredible. And I, I think as a child, I kind of uh, role modeled um, myself on her. So I just want to kind of do a, a, a quick little small video uh and um, kind of talk about kind of talk about my uh, my mom. So um, as I mentioned in one of the other videos, uh, my mom did uh, in home daycare when uh, when I was young. I think I was about I want to say about uh, six or seven. My mom started uh, doing in home daycare. Um, we had uh, we, we had a pretty big house, and um, there were four of us kids. I, w I was the oldest kid, and then. Um, you know, and then my mom had, like I say, infants and toddlers, five, five of them sometimes, uh, mostly infants, but, but infants and toddlers and, uh, and sometimes some, some, uh, some smaller children. But so we had like all this baby furniture at our house. I mean, like our, our, our family room had, um, I think there were uh, one or two cribs, a playpen, um, uh, walkers. Uh, my mom didn't have a changing table. Um, this was the 1960s. So, I don't know. She just she changed uh, changed the babies uh, on the on the floor or or on the couch because we had a couch there in the family room. She changed babies on the the couch. But so so my mom did this all through. I don't know. I was probably about twelve or thirteen when she gave up doing daycare and she took a job at Motorola. Um, she actually had worked the third shift. She worked the overnight shift, but it was it was a lot more money. We needed the money at the time. Um, so, you know, she didn't really want to give up, you know, infant toddler care, but she was just kind of forced to through, uh, financial circumstances of our, of our family at the time. Um, but so from the age of like six or seven to the, the age of, you know, 12, 13, there were always babies at our house. I mean, you know, constant babies at our house. And, um, there were, there wasn't anything formal. My mom didn't have a sign in the, the front lawn or or anything else like that. It was basically uh, knowing the parents of the other children. It was just kind of an informal, informal kind of uh, daycare arrangement. But it was full time. It was, you know, I remember um, I, I helped my mom with the babies um, when I was uh, when I was uh, out of school during the summer. I can remember um, third, fourth, um, fifth grade. You know, I was I was helping feed the babies. I, I even changed diapers. Um, it's been so long, I can't even hardly remember how to do it. But it's, but I I, I did all that and um, and I loved it. And most importantly, I got to watch my mom um, as 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 a role model, as a caregiver. And my mom was the most loving, proactive caregiver you could ever imagine. I, and I wanted to kind of share some some anecdotal stories about my mom and and how. Uh, how proactive she was and really kind of kind of how far ahead of her time she was I think uh, she never really read any books on infant or or toddler care she never took any classes but uh, but my mom knew quite a bit about babies um, there were four of us kids and you know and she had babysat a lot when when she was a teenager and then you know, she started this in-home daycare when I was about six or seven, and um, and 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 it's interesting because I would watch her around other moms, and she definitely was was again more proactive in taking care of of the babies than even some of the the baby's uh, own own moms, and definitely the dads. The dads didn't do anything in the 1960s in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, where we where we grew up, where my mom had this uh, informal in home daycare, um, you, you know, dads never did anything. They they didn't take care of babies. They 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 had nothing to do with with the with the upbringing of an education of of young children. So, uh, but the but the moms. Now I remember again. I want to share some of these anecdotes. Anecdotes. Um, my mom one time. I remember this. There was a baby who who like cried a lot. And the uh, the baby's mom would say, "Oh, you know, just 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 put him in the playpen and let him cry." I, I remember this phrase, you know, "let him cry it out," or whatever. And uh, and you know, the the mom thought she was kind of like being a friend to my mom, saying, "Oh, hey, you know, you're busy, 
you know, don't uh, don't worry about, um, you, you know, uh, you know, my my son, Robert, just just let Robert, you know, uh, uh, cry his little eyes out in the playpen. He'll be OK. And I remember I remember the, the mom, you know, telling my mom this and my mom was like, no, he's not going to be OK. I'm going to respond to those and I'm going to comfort him. And if, if I have other things going on with other babies, that's OK. But I'm going to comfort Robert and I'm going to take care of his needs. And I'm not going to just put him in a playpen and let him, quote, cry it out. I mean, cry it out. I, that, that phrase just, just, just bugs me. And it bugged my mom. And I guess that's where I guess I get it, you know, going back to, you know, modeling yourself on, on, on someone else's uh, behavior. And, and, uh, and, I, and, and so my mom would, like, argue with this, this other, with, with Robert's mom and say, no, no, it's, it's uh, you know, he, he needs something. He needs comforting. You know, he needs to sit on my lap. He, he needs something. And all children are different. And I'm, I'm not just going to put him in a, a playpen and, and let him cry that out. And I remember that about my mom. Uh, I, I just remember how, you know, empathetic and how in tune she was to the needs of the infants. It was just, it was just, uh, amazing. And then with, uh, potty training, I remember, you know, many of the moms would, would be pressuring my mom to, you know, because my mom was with them all day while, while their, their parents were at work. And they would start pressuring my mom to like potty train these kids. And, and my mom would say, look, they're not ready. You know, and some of these, some of these, uh, some of these toddlers were like, I don't know, like, uh, you know, uh, 16 months, 18 months, uh, whatever, you know, uh, uh, two years. And my mom would say, no, no, let's, you know, give them time when they're ready to be pie trained, then, then they'll be ready. And these other moms, again, my mom was ahead of her time on this topic. I mean, you know, the other moms were like, no, he's, he's big enough or she, or she, you know, she's big enough. She can, she can do whatever. And, and perform all these other skills she should be able to to use the potty and my mom was like no they, they're not showing any signs of readiness and and I was amazed at that at how my mom would kind of you know not 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 you know argumentative not you know in a in a, in a, a kind of uh, you know uh, conflict type of thing but but kind of just just trying to teach the other moms hey you know don't don't stick the baby in the playpen and let them quote cry it out you know, or, or, you know, or rush through potty training when, when, it, you know, they're, they're not ready. They're not ready. And, um, and, and some, it, it, and something else too, I, I, I noticed this about my mom. I mean, my mom was like so proactive. I know a lot of daycare centers, like they have these standard rules now to, you know, basically diapers are to be checked like every, every two hours and unless, uh, you know, the, there's a bowel movement, you, you smell something or something like that. And so it's kind of like the standard rule, like check diapers every two hours. Well, my mom was like way ahead of that. I mean, my mom was like really checking those diapers, like all the time. And um, there was like never some two hour rule, but my mom was like super proactive. And I remember again, the other moms uh, in the neighborhood, the other moms who were her friends, whose children were in my mom's daycare, they they didn't check diapers hardly at all. I mean, I remember, boy, I, I can remember like tons of times where the mom was like, you know, coming to pick up the, the child or whatever, or maybe they were just, you know, socializing. They'd sometimes sit there and chat with my mom in our, our, uh, our family room for for a, a long time, you know, while they were picking up the, the baby, you know, and there'd be an odor. And my, my mom would, would go, oh, I smell something. I, I, I think um, I think Susan needs changing. And and uh, the other mom would be just like, oh, you know, it's, it's, it's just probably gas, just, you know, whatever. And my mom was like, no, you check it out. So my mom would always go over, pull, out the, pull open the back of the diaper and, and check for poop. And and it was funny because the, the other moms, it just seemed like, you know, they couldn't be bothered, you know, it was just like, oh, yeah, that's just it's probably gas. And my mom was like, no, you got to check it out. It's like, you know, if you smell something or there's something that, that indicates that, you know, the baby might be, you know, uh, filling their pants and you, you need to check that out. You need to you need to change that and you need to check the diapers all the time because you don't want a baby, you know, staying in a wet or a poopy diaper for very long. And, and my mom was way ahead of the curve on this. My, my mom was, uh, way ahead of her time in the, uh, the two hour, uh, uh, diaper check rule. That's, that's kind of standard 
now for most, I, I'd, I'd hate to, if I put a time limit on it, my mom probably checked diapers every 30 minutes or something. I mean, she was busy. My mom was proactive. She was just always, you know, you know, doing this, doing that. And, and again, it's, you know, she, uh, she, she was just, when I would watch her with these other moms and, and by the way, you know, a lot of people blame, uh, inattentiveness on parents, moms and dads, you know, they'll say, well, you know, the mom or the dad, you know, they're not paying very much attention, you know, to the baby because of cell phones and people always put the blame on cell phones. But in fact, I'm here to tell you cell phones play a role, but cell phones aren't, aren't the, uh, the, the main culprit because I can tell you back in the 1960s, back when my mom was doing in-home daycare, back when other moms were coming to drop off or, or pick up their, their children, their, their babies, their infants and toddlers, I can tell you they were definitely dis distracted. There were no cell phones and there was no internet. You know, it was basically a television that had, you know, a, a few, few channels. But there was, uh, there was no, uh, you know, it, but they were distracted. I mean, they were either like, you know, talking to my mom or they were like watching soap operas or, you know, it was something where they weren't focused on the baby, you know, and, and, and I remember that. And again, I remember how my mom was focused on the babies. But these other moms were, you know, going back to you know, the poopy diet, the, mom, the moms would be like talking, and my mom would be like, I smell something. I, I, I you know, I, I think she pooped her pants. And the other mom would be like, no, 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 it's just, it's just gas, whatever. And they're just talking, not really zeroing in on the baby, not really, you know, proactively caring for that, that baby that, that has a poopy diaper and needs to be changed, or they're crying and they need to be comforted, or they need a, a bottle. It seemed like the other moms, Again, this is not a modern phenomenon. This is not, you know, the, the result of cell phones. You know, a lot of moms, no matter what time period it is, no matter, you know, what country society you're in or whatever, they just get distracted. And I think just certain people, my mom it kind of falls into this, certain people are, are, are more, um, how do we say, kind of, kind of in tune with with the babies, kind of, you know, more, more, uh, more proactive. And I hate to keep using that word. I use that word in all my videos, but it's really true. I mean, I just, it's how I describe people proactive who are, you know, just really, really there and really, uh, focused on the, on the children. And so, um, I, I think it's just a, uh, I think it's just a, a, a personality thing or, or court or whatever, but whatever it is, um, no, it's not a new phenomenon, folks. It's not, not, the, not the fault of the cell phones, the d distracted parenting or whatever. That was the case in, in the late 1960s, early, early 1970s, about the time when my, my mom got out, of, uh, got out of child care. But there were distracted parents, distracted moms uh, who were really not zeroed in on the kids. But my mom was. My mom was, and, and she was my role model, and she loved those babies. I never saw my mom um, get frustrated or angry with the babies. My goodness, I mean, you, you had five or six infants, and they were crying and, and sometimes, and there, there were stuff going on, and, and my mom never got, never got frustrated, never got, you know, never got angry. It was wonderful to watch, and, and so I don't know. I hope that I have a lot of my mom in me. And I, I'm I'm going into being an infant teacher, and I, that is one of my hopes that that I absorbed a lot of that growing up. That I'm going to be just like my mom in that infant room, and I think I will. I think I will. I, I'm, um, I'm confident, and 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 I love the babies. And again, I'm I'm into being you know proactive. I love to be busy. And, uh, and watching my mom all those years with those babies, it, it made quite an impression on me. And she was my role model. I mean, just looking up to her and going, wow, she really loves these babies. She is, she, she loves, she loves providing care for them. And, and that was just wonderful to watch. And I was kind of sad when she got out of it and she had to go to work for Mo Motorola. And she ended up working the, the third shift all night and, and our family. My family had a lot of, a lot of stuff with that. But anyways, um, another episode of Mr. Marty on the positive, talking about what a wonderful caregiver my mom was, how proactive she was, and she was very different from the other, um, some of the other parents of the time. So uh, thank you, Mom. Thanks for being a, a great role model for me, and I hope I take a lot of you into that infant room with me. 
Thanks. Have another uh, positive day. Go out there and make this a positive day and be the positive change that you want to see in others. Thank you.